So now we move on to our last section, which is about acids and bases and how we measure pH. Now, before you can understand how we measure pH, you need to understand this concept of how water can ionize. So remember that the water molecule is polar, so each oxygen has a slight negative charge, and each hydrogen has a slight positive charge. Negative and positive charges are attracted to each other, so different water molecules will associate with each other through hydrogen bonding. However, what can sometimes happen is that the oxygen of one water molecule can actually steal the hydrogen of another water molecule because it's attracting the hydrogen to itself so strongly. So this one now becomes H3O+. It is a hydronium ion. The water molecule that lost the hydrogen proton now becomes OH-, a hydroxide ion. So liquid water can separate into these hydronium ions, H3O+, and hydroxide ions, OH-. Now in any body of water, only a small percentage of these water molecules will actually ionize. But it's happening all the time, and understanding it is important towards our understanding of pH. So pH is the measure of the concentration of hydronium ions in an aqueous or water-based solution. So say I take neutral water. The concentration of hydronium ions in neutral water is equal to 1 times 10 to the negative 7th. And this gives me a pH of 7. Now say that I added an acidic solution that adds an excess of these hydrogen protons. By adding an excess of hydrogen protons, we will increase the concentration of the hydronium ions. And say that I added enough to increase it to 1 times 10 to the negative 2. Notice that 1 times 10 to the negative 2 is a bigger number than 1 times 10 to the negative 7. This is a bigger number, it's a greater concentration of hydronium ions, and this gives me a pH of 2. So pH always reflects the concentration of hydronium ions. And in this next picture, you can see a diagram that shows you the pH of different solutions that you might be familiar with. So distilled water is neutral, it has a pH of 7. And the most acidic solution we have shown here is gastric acid. This is stomach acid found inside your stomach. Um, the contents of your stomach are very highly acidic. So let's review what an acid is. An acid can donate extra H plus ions. By doing so, it will increase the concentration of hydronium ions in water. That um, gives it a pH of below 7. And here's just an example of an acid, a hydrochloric acid, HCl. When in a water uh, aqueous solution, it will separate, ionize into H plus and Cl minus. So it donates extra H plus, increasing the concentration of hydronium ions and decreasing the pH to below 7. A base can accept H plus ions. By accepting H plus ions, it will decrease the concentration of hydronium ions. By decreasing that, um, it will actually raise the pH to above 7. An additional part of the definition of base is that some can actually even release extra hydroxide ions. And so an example of a base is sodium hydroxide. This will ionize into sodium and hydroxide ion, which can accept H plus ions to combine with these into water. So and lastly, let's talk about buffers. A buffer is any solution that can help maintain a fairly stable pH. It does so by either accepting excess H plus ions. So if there's too many of these making a solution too acidic, it will accept them. If a solution is too basic and has a low number of H plus, it will donate them. And why buffers are important to living organisms? Well, 
In living cells, all of the biochemical reactions need to happen at a certain pH. So it is very important that living cells are able to maintain a fairly stable pH. So we have a variety of buffers. And here's just an example of one where if, the solu if it needs to um, donate H plus ions, the reaction can go in this direction. If there's too many H plus ions, it will accept them and the reaction will go to the left. So, and you have lots of different buffers in your body. In fact, if the pH of your blood changes even a little bit, that can actually be fatal. So you will learn a lot more about the importance of pH and buffers throughout this year. So let's just summarize what you learned today. We first talked about the polar nature of water, then the water's life-giving properties, and then we discussed how water can ionize and how we use that to measure pH. And finally, a review of acids, bases, and buffers and how they are important to living organisms. See you next time.